soon. Can you hear me okay? Yes. How are you doing? Doing Just well. Okay, great. Good. Everyone will go ahead and uh, first mute their phones. That will help with some of the background noise. All right, then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, good afternoon. My name is Shalina Hawkins, and I serve as the director for the Department of Community and Economic Development, and I will be facilitating the public hearing on today. And joining me are some of my colleagues, Ms. Phyllis Brown, who serves as the deputy director for our department, Ms. Barbara Francis, who is the economic development program manager, Ms. Cicely Vaughn Brown, who's our community development manager, Ms. Jeanette Mills, who will be recording your comments and questions during the public hearing uh, process, and some of my other coworkers. Uh, first, I wanna thank you all for taking time out to attend a virtual uh, public hearing. On today, we're gonna cover three items, uh, the first being the 2021 Annual Action Plan, 2020, 2020-2021 uh, 2020, Annual Action Plan and our proposed use of funds, substantial amendment um, of our 2018 and 2019 action plans, which does include the special funding of CDBG funds directed to the coronavirus, as well as amendment to the city's 2016-2021 consolidated plan. And so I'll go ahead and get uh, started with the presentation, but in the essence of time. Um, all the questions will be delayed to the end of the presentation. However, you can feel free to, uh, for those that are joining by computer equipment, use the chat box, as well as those attendees that are calling by phone. If you'll just wait until prompted to the end of the presentation, then we'll answer those questions at that time. Um, and also at the duration of the public hearing, I'll also provide you with some alternate uh, information as to how you can provide your written comments or your oral comments. Okay, and so first I wanna get started with some of the HUD updates. Um, HUD has notified its entitlement communities for which the city is one and its states of their fiscal year 2020, 2021 uh, community development block grant and home investment partnership program allocations. And so after they make notification, then each community or state must submit to HUD an annual action plan by their designated start date and so that this public hearing is a part of that process. Um, and also on the 27th of March, uh, President Trump signed the um, Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act, which did provide that special funding for uh, the coronavirus and meeting those priority needs. And the city's allocation for that special funding was $523,987. And then the last thing is HUD has issued to these uh, entitlement communities and states what we consider as HUD program waivers. And so we've received some uh, waivers or some um, extensions from or deviations from some of the requirements of the program to allow the cities and the states to be able to more expeditiously to undertake their programs. And so some of the uh, programming that will go over, um, program funds that will go over in the presentation will be targeted towards the home program and you'll be able to see where funding was pre was reprogrammed to benefit the tenant based rental assistance program. And so the city again was awarded $523,987 through that CARES Act. And so some uh, as we are listening to webinars and communicating with various partners throughout our community <clears throat> and across other communities, excuse me. Some of the programs that are being targeted for that funding is direct uh, rental mortgage assistance to low and moderate income individuals for a period of up to three months. Uh, public services, these are your food distributions and food delivery services to assist those populations who might have difficulties during these times, such as our seniors or those that are disabled that have been impacted by the coronavirus. A uh, hotel motel voucher assistance program that's been targeted to our homeless individuals who may be in uh, unsafe shelters, uh, in uninhabitable places, or in congregate shelters. And in order to comply with the shelter in place order or isolation, then um, hotel motel vouchers are being considered. And then business assistance as in a form of short term gap assistance for a period of up to three months. And we'll talk a little bit about that throughout the presentation. So first, I always like to get started with what are community development block grant 
funds um, and annually the city does receive an allocation from HUD directly. We do not have to apply for those funds because we're an entitlement community. And so we carry out an array of programs and services that revitalize our community. There are public services where we partner with our nonprofit groups, um, improve public facilities and also provide business assistance. And at minimum, we have to ensure that 70% of those funds are set aside to benefit low and moderate income individuals. And HUD has established caps for that program where 20% of the funding, um, including of our inclusive by program income, uh, is utilized for administrative services. And that's providing oversight to the program and any awardees or beneficiaries of that program. And then as it relates to public services, we are not able to um, exceed the 15% cap uh, normally for the CDBG program. And then we have been given some waiver considerations to where we can exceed that cap for the upcoming year. And so CDBG funds are provided on a statutory formula basis by HUD each year. And HUD takes in consideration um, as we're talking about the census and we're talking about how people need to be counted. Um, they do consider your allocations based upon that census data. And so they look at things such as your extent of poverty or your poverty rate, your total population to include population growth or population lag in relation to other metropolitan areas. They look at our housing condition, that's our aging stock, our overcrowding or availability of housing. And so some eligible uses for CDBG programs can include acquisition of real property and that's uh, land and buildings, relocation of property, demolition of property, rehabilitation of existing structures, whether they're residential or non-residential, infrastructure improvements, construction of our public facilities, or carrying out an array of public uh, service activities that benefit our senior citizens, our youth, our homeless population, disabled persons, and other special populations. And also economic development activities where businesses can be provided with, um, as, as we'll talk about later, um, professional office space through the Micro Business Enterprise Center, um, financial assistance or uh, technical assistance. Okay, so that's the CDBG program. Now let's look at the home program. Um, again, it's based on our awards are based on a formula allocation. And once uh, HUD gets the, um, Congress makes the uh, appropriation, then what HUD does is it takes a set aside for technical assistance, where they're providing technical assistance to the awardees and also providing funding for insular areas. And these are areas such as the U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, and a few others. And then the remaining portion they take and make allocation to uh, local governments and states. And so for this particular program as well, HUD has set aside a, a set an established cap of 10% that can be uh, allocated for administrative costs. And again, that's providing oversight to the programs and to uh, compliance related uh, matters as it relates to providing that oversight. And also there is a 15% minimum cap that the city must set aside for CHOTOs. And our CHOTOs are our uh, nonprofit groups that are certified who have a mission of affordable housing development. Some eligible uses for the home program can include new construction activities, uh, rehabilitation, reconstruction, uh, conversion of housing, a, a, a particular building that might not have been uh, a residential building that has been converted for housing, on-site improvement, relocation costs, refinancing of existing loans, tenant-based rental assistance, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, where we can provide uh, up to 24 months of rental subsidies for renters to assist with um, utility assistance as well as security deposit assistance. And so how are activities selected annually uh, that are undertaken by the city, in, uh, whether it's in directly or in partnership with some of our local nonprofits, businesses, and developers? Uh, first, that activity has to be identified as a priority activity in our existing consolidated plan. And right now we're in our consolidated plan year 2016-2021. Also, we have, um, we have to consider citizen input, which means that um, what we're doing today process is getting input on what you're seeing at the grassroots ground level on priority needs in your community. I'm sorry, whomever just joined your mic. Thank you. 
And if there are what are considered urgent uh, needs or emergencies, such as the coronavirus outbreak, then these two can be considered as priorities for the city. And so for this upcoming year, fiscal year 2020, 2021, our allocation from HUD is $890,731 for the CDBG program. And then what we've done is identified estimated amount of program income that we'll receive. And this program income is generated from the residential and the commercial loans that we have made over the years. And so as they're making their payments in, we're able to count that as program income and add that to our HUD uh, allocation which then creates a total grant allocation of uh, $1,316,992 for the total program year for um, CDBG. And so this particular slide, you'll see a number of activities that will be undertaken for the program year. And our program year starts July the 1st of each year and ends June the 30th of the following year. And you'll see where um, $300,000 will be used for program administration of the Micro Business Enterprise Center. And again, this is providing business uh, space, technical assistance, and other resources to businesses that are housed within the Micro Business Center. $263,398 will be used for administrative costs. And again, these administrative costs are for the CDBG program and providing oversight and administration. $147,901 will be allocated to carry out business and residential loan servicing activities. $131,963 will be used for rental and homeowner rehabilitation of housing. $113,175 will be used for homeless services. And again, some of these funds will be used as match for our emergency solutions grant. And that's funding that we've gotten from the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Uh, if someone who never joined will mute their mic, please. We are also allocating about $100,000 for um, our competitive round. This is uh, for our, in partnership with our local nonprofits who are carrying out public services that benefit low and moderate income persons. $100,000 will be used for rental rehabilitation. $52,561 will be used for inspection of uh, rental properties. And this is where our construction staff go out uh, for projects that we're considering undertaking. Uh, and create what we call scopes of work and identifying those repair needs for those properties. $48,929 will be used for payment of interest on our Section 108 loans. And again, these are loans that were allocated over 10 plus years ago to the Hilton Garden Inn and McGregor Golf Company. $29,065 will be used to assist our renters, our homeowners, and homeless persons um, with housing counseling services. And the city is a certified housing counseling agency, a HUD approved housing counseling agency. Uh, $10,000 will be used to partner with Albany Second Chance, who is a local nonprofit that uh, provides job training opportunities to very low income persons. $10,000 will be awarded to Parks and Recreation just to carry out um, activities that benefit our youth and our seniors um, that are low and moderate income. $5,000 for dis disposition activities. and. These are activities, uh, we have properties for sale. And so in order to ready them for sale, we have to obtain title searches, surveys, appraisals, and temporarily manage those properties until sale. And then $5,000 will be used to promote fair housing initiatives. And this is in educating our residents and our lenders, landlords, uh, our realtors, and on uh, federal regulations and laws as it relates to uh, discriminatory practices. And so again, these activities have been identified for 2020, 2021, which begins on July the 1st of this year, ending on June 30th uh, of next year. And so let's move on to the home program and the identified uh, activities for this particular uh, funding source. So our grant allocation from HUD was $502,072. And the city anticipates again on generating program income, again, those residential um, and uh, commercial loan repayments that were made uh, as they're making their payments. Um, this money is able to be added to our allocation. So that gives us a total grant allocation amount of $646,252 for the home program. And so you'll see some of the activities that have been identified where about $365,413 will be set aside or used for our tenant-based rental assistance program. And again, this program provides up to 24 months for our, our rental subsidies to assist those households um, with security deposits and utility assistance. 
And so um, we'll talk a little bit later in one of the slides where we'll talk about how funding uh, for this program has been increased. Uh, funding from other programs have repro been reprogrammed to this particular program to assist those households that have been impacted by the coronavirus. Okay, so you'll see we set aside $116,214 to assist with affordable housing development. And these can include developers who might be applying for the low-income housing tax credits through the Georgia Department of Community Affairs. Uh, $95,000 has been set aside for uh, helping our uh, prospective home buyers with closing costs and first or uh, second mortgages. $64,625 will be used for, again, administrative costs and providing oversight and administration of the home program. And then $5,000 will be allocated towards uh, down payment assistance. And again, these programs will be carried out for the 2020-2021 program year. Okay, so now let's move on to what we call our substantial amendments. And our, we're proposing substantial amendments to our 2018 and 2019 action plan. And so whenever the city makes a change to its CDBG or home allocation or priorities, or if it identifies new activities to be undertaken or changes the purpose of an activity or where there is a 50% more or less um, change in funding amount for a particular program, then we're required to undergo what's considered a substantial amendment. And that process does require for us to provide uh, public notice. And so we're going to talk about some of the CDBG programs and activities for which we are proposing substantial amendment. And so you'll see uh, for uh, these particular programs, what I'll try to do is identify the activity, uh, the program year, and then the justification. So for program year, fiscal year 2018-2019, uh, um, we will undertake a demolition or a demolition program was reduced from $15,000 to $0 because that activity was delayed. And again, that, that funding was pre, uh, reprogrammed for other activities. Uh, for the same year, commercial facade funding was reduced from $15,000 to $0 as there were no applications, um, completed applications that were received during that program year. Uh, rehabilitation of multifamily units was decreased from $133,497 to $12,988, and that funding was reprogrammed from CDBG programs to rental revenues. For the Section 3 job training program, it was reduced from $22,500 to $5,627 as a subrecipient was not able to expend that funding within the particular time frame. And I think I hear someone else who has joined us, if you'll mute your mic. Thank you. And for program year 2019-2020, uh, the following activities were uh, modified. Commercial facade was reduced from $0 to $2,000. And this was to assist um, an existing business with some commercial facade improvements. Our flood mitigation program was decreased from $0. We added $10,000 to assist with uh, mitigation assistance. And this is to help lower the flood insurance premiums or cost for low and moderate income households. Uh, commercial rehabilitation assistance was reduced from $25,000 to uh, $0 as the city's uh, funding was reduced for that program year. And so again, that funds had, those funds had to be reprogrammed to other activities. And I think someone else has joined. If you'll just please mute your mic. Thank you. And then we'll talk about, you'll see where we identified um, for 2019-20, uh, the CARES Act funding. We uh, didn't fund anything because uh, we didn't have the impact of the coronavirus. Well, once the president signed that act, now we have where we've not funded anything for this particular year, we're able to add that 523,987 to assist with the emergencies and those priority um, matters as it relates to households that are low and moderate income that were impacted by the coronavirus. And so for uh, the home program, again, we'll identify those program years and um, activities and the justifications. For acquisition, rehabilitation, and home ownership for home buyer projects, we increased the funding from $0 to $75,000 to acquire a property in the city limits to create a home ownership opportunity for a low and moderate income household. We also, uh, for the down payment assistance uh, program, decreased it from $37,000 
uh, $42 to $13,000 as less funding was utilized for that particular program year. Rental rehabilitation was decreased from $282,384 to $47,013 as funding sources were revised from home, uh, the home program to rental revenues. Total set aside was reduced uh, from $76,082 to $0. And again, we reprogrammed these funds to assist to provide additional funds to the tenant based rental assistance program. For fiscal year 2019 20, you'll see where acquisition, rehabilitation, and homeownership activity was reduced from $0 to $50,000 to again acquire a property, a single family home within the city limits for uh, creating a homeownership opportunity for a low and moderate income household. The AHOP program, this is our affordable home ownership program, and we uh, increased it to $75,000 to provide a first mortgage, a second mortgage, or um, to a low and moderate income household. Total operating assistance uh, will be decreased from $22,811 to $0, again, to reprogram those uh, funds to direct it to the tenant based rental assistance program. And then the total set aside for this year, which is $68,432 will be uh, reprogrammed also to the tenant-based rental assistance program. And then finally, we'll move on to our substantial amendments to the consolidated plan. Um, when we make uh, amendments to uh, programs, we also have to make sure that those activities are in our consolidated plan. So we, what we want to do is to amend the consolidated plan to make sure that we include uh, language and information as it relates to the city's undertaking of activities relative to the coronavirus. And we also are in the process of updating our enterprise neighborhood revitalization strategy area plan. And this plan will uh, be updated in the upcoming months. Uh, it's currently in formulation through uh, Mosaic Community Planning, which is a consultant group. But we just want to make sure that we have identified this plan update in our consolidated plan. And then any other priorities that are that's coming up as it relates to community needs and as we're assessing our needs, then we want to make sure that that also is reflective within our consolidated plan. And so this kind of concludes uh, my presentation portion on the city's uh, fiscal year 2020-21 annual action plan and proposed use of funds, and also the substantial amendments for program years 2018 and 2019, and again, those amendments to the consolidated plan. And before we get ready to start um, answering questions, um, just make sure that um, you're aware that, and you'll see the slide says that written and oral uh, comments can be forwarded to uh, GI Mills at albanyga.gov, and again, that's GI Mills at albanyga. Dot gov, or you can contact our department by phone by dialing 229-302-1251. And again, that number is 229-302-1251 between the hours of 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. All comments, whether they are received in written format or orally, must be provided by our office by no later than noon on May the 5th. And so, um, and also we provided you with the link for those that are joining us by computer where you can access the draft 2020-2021 annual action plan that will be presented to our commission and for submittal to HUD. And if you are joining us by phone, if you will provide um, information to uh, contact us by phone, again, that's 302-1251, then we can provide you with that link in order for you to view that um, action plan. And so at this time, if you will, um, again, for those participants, uh, mute your phones until you are prompted to mute and we'll entertain questions at this time. Okay, we have Ms. Bird. Can you hear me, Sherelle? Yes, okay. hi, good morning, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, yes, so thank you for this presentation. How would organizations apply for those COVID-19 funds? Is there an application process? Yes, ma'am, right now we're in the process of 
again, obtaining the citizen input. And then based on the particular program that we'll carry out, if it's a program to assist with homeless persons or assist with businesses or assist with um, individuals or households that were impacted, um, just maybe through our um, a particular program that provides housing assistance, such as tenant-based rental assistance program, then we'll provide information on um, application intake and advertise those funds um, officially. And again, uh, we'll use our social media outlook, uh, out uh, reaches, um, our newspaper ads, and um, probably working with our PIO office in um, some type of press release to ensure that the public is aware that those funds are available. But it will be an application process. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And I'm looking in our chat box to see. Okay, there's a question. What's the time frame on that process? Okay, so as it relates to um, CBG and the home programs, uh, for the activities that are specific to the coronavirus, this process, again, that we are undertaking is uh, part of that process. So we will make a um, presentation to our Board of City Commissioners on May the 5th, and again, bring to them our fiscal year 2020-21 action plan and those proposed substantial amendments to include those activities that are um, a part of those that will address coronavirus. Sorry about that. I'm going to leave this screen up. And what I'll do is go back to our, just in case someone has some questions about um, the particular activities. Okay, I have one here. I'm a small business that needs funding. Okay, and again, um, what I'll do is I'll ask either uh, Ms. Stewart Brown or Barbara Francis, um, because the COVID funding that we are proposing, um, the 523987 can be used to assist those small businesses, and I will um, defer to them to answer some specific questions or give information on that particular program. Okay. okay, is the funding going to be implemented before the end of the fiscal year? Yes, what HUD is allowing us to do is to be able to um, expeditiously carry out those programs and those activities. And so what we're doing is, again, going before, going through the public hearing process, um, going before our commissioners to get approval, and then we'll submit those action plans to HUD to be able to get them to review, allow them a review period and approval of those plans so that we can begin with program implementation. And I have um, Ms. Phyllis Brown and Ms. Barbara Francis. Go ahead, Phyllis. Right now, we are in the middle of crafting a program to be able to provide assistance to small businesses. And those small businesses right now are being defined as those that have approximately 15 or less employees with anywhere between 250 and 500,000 in annual gross receipts um, to be eligible to apply for those funding, that funding. And that is going to be in the form of a grant. It will not be a loan of, of any sort. Um, but the eligibility requirements outside of being uh, having 15 employees or less is you'll need to be a sole proprietorship, a limited liability company, or an S corporation. You would need to provide us with you know, some fin financial information, a copy of your business license. Um, we do want to track if you are in the middle of receiving any other sources of funding. So our funding wants to also complement, not take the place of, but complement what, uh, whatever additional funding that you'll be getting. This funding will be anywhere from $2,500 to $10,000, again, depending on what your individual business's needs are. Um, as Shalina brought out in the beginning slides, 
that these, this funding source allows us to be able to assist with up to three months of what your operating cost may be. So you would need to provide us with whatever your liabilities are, um, copies of your financial statements. I think we're looking at your 2018 tax return, but there's, there'll be more particulars sent out about that particular process very soon. That application will be available on our website to allow you to be able to apply for it online, upload whatever required documents there are, as well as submit the application to our office. Thank you, Phyllis. Okay, we have a, another question. And if, Mr. Gordon, if you have any other questions about that, if you could you know, add it into the chat, I'll go ahead and take the other two questions. Um, do we yet know if the COVID-19 funding will be a reimbursable grant? Right, COVID-19, I think we had conversation with most of our programs require um, that it be on a reimbursable basis, but we do know that based upon um, certain partners or businesses or subrecipients that we will likely partner with, that there may be alternate, uh, may, we may, may need to consider alternate methods to be able to provide that funding. And so what we'll do is be in conversation with HUD to see what acceptable practices um, we can consider. Okay, Mr. Miles, I'll come back to your question. Mr. Gordon wants to know what's the email to apply for that, um, I guess for that funding, Phyllis? It'll, we'll make that available. It'll be on our website. Feel free to check, um, you know, uh, on, on our website. Like I said, we're in the middle right now of crafting that. It's not available right now, but we understand the need is there. So we're making every effort to try to get that information out there as quickly as possible. Okay, and here's a question from Mr. Miles. Is the Section 3 training funding just for one particular agency? or is this funding available for any agency that is able to, buy, to provide this training? In past, we have partnered with Albany Second Chance, but we don't wanna say that there are no other agencies that are providing um, job, there are no other agencies that could apply for um, job training to very low income uh, residents. And same similar to what the Housing Authority uh, does with uh, their particular Section 3 program. So there could be a partnership with other agencies, as long as they're serving residents of, uh, to say particularly the housing authority, um, or those individuals that are very low income. Okay, the next question is, will there be a formula for the coronavirus pandemic grants? That allocation that we received um, from HUD is already based on a formula allocation. And so as we are obtaining our citizen uh, input and information from, um, again, for those that are grassroots levels, then what we will do is identify those priority needs. And again, this information will go before the Board of City Commissioners, and we will identify at that time what activities we will be able to undertake with that funding, how much is available. And so then it will be awarded based on the programs that we carry out. Okay, any other questions in the chat? I don't have any others. I guess if anyone else has a question, they can just um, unmute, unmute their mic and they can actually ask it over the, over the mic. Okay, I'm just gonna try to unmute. So are there any more questions? I don't have any more in the chat, so. I do have one other question. This is Sherelle Bird again. Um, will this be publicized for others if they are not on this call to be able to do comments or the hearing, um, be a part of the comment process of this hearing? Yes, ma'am. If there are other community meetings um, that we, again, I think we joined um, one on last night, but we've advertised it in the, again, this is a shorter time span. And because the, the shelter in place, 
Um, we weren't able to get out as we normally would with, you know, advertisement of flowers and things like that. But if there are groups that are meeting that um, you're aware of, please provide us with that information or contact. Um, but we'll utilize our, again, our social media outlets, our um, news outlets, our newspapers as best as we can. But again, these, this, the comments um, have to be provided to us by May the 5th. And again, it can be made by contacting us, uh, you know, directly uh, via our emails um, or by phone. I have a question. Um, on the 24 months and security deposit, is that coming from the home funds or is that coming from the CDBG dollars? That funding is coming from our home funds. Tenant-based rental assistance is a program that we um, carry out every year. And so this year is a little bit different in that we are adding additional funds. Again, when we talked about reprogramming those funds and adding it to the tenant-based rental assistance program because we know that there is likely to be a need for those low and moderate income individuals who may have been impacted by the coronavirus. Maybe they have been furloughed or uh, unemployed um, at this time and are having challenges with um, and a need for rental assistance. And Phyllis, if you want to add anything to that. That, that was pretty much what I was going to say too. Okay, here's another question in the chat. Um, can you give us the website address to your office? Okay. Uh, it is www.albanyga.gov. And then you want to go to About Us, and you'll see the Department of Community and Economic Development listed there. Okay. All right. Here's another question. Is that rental assistance only for city-owned properties? No, it's not. For the tenant-based rental assistance program, um, the applicant will um, identify a property located within the city limits. Those properties have to be within the city limits because our CDBG funds and home funds, because we're an entitlement community, they're restricted to the city limits. So they can identify a proposed property and then what we'll do is take the necessary steps to do our due diligence um, with inspections and identifying that unit um, and determining a rent reasonableness for that uh, particular unit. So it's not solely for city owned properties, but if that uh, particular applicant does desire to reside um, within the city uh, city's properties, it can be utilized. But we are, you know, we can't steer applicants to our properties, but they're able to um, rent properties that are within the city limits. Okay, for this particular meeting was advertised, we are required to advertise in our local newspapers. So it was advertised, and Jeanette, you may have the specific dates in the Southwest Jordan as well as the Albany Herald. And then we sent out the press release uh, through our PIO office that advertised the um, CARES funding that was given in the upcoming uh, public hearing. Okay, will notes for this call be shared with, um, with the group? Yes, as a part of this uh, public hearing process, we're required to identify um, information, priority needs, um, uh, and questions as they were posed throughout the presentation. And this presentation is also being recorded, so we'll make the slide uh, presentation as well as the recording available on our website for public viewing and access. You're welcome. So do any of our callers, I'm going to unmute our callers just in case they may have um, some questions. OK. 
Okay. Any more questions in the chat box? No. No. Okay. Well, I want to give a maybe two more minutes just in case someone can. And don't think that um, this presentation or this public hearing is um, again the last opportunity. Again, we can receive those comments um, today, um, anytime between now and noon on May the 5th. Uh, and again, uh, this information will be a part of our annual action plan that is submitted to HUD for review and approval, as well as made um, presentation to our Board of City Commissioners on May 5th. And so if there are some um, additional initiatives or activities that you're con uh, considering or you're seeing at the grassroots levels. We want to know about those so that we can make sure that the funding is allocated and directed to those of highest and priority need. Okay, and I see we have um, Commissioner um, Young, I didn't know if you had anything that you wanted to share with um, our attendees. Uh, no, ma'am, not not really, but I uh, just want to thank you guys for uh, the wonderful job that you always do in um, disseminating this information. Um, and I really want us to really focus in on how best we can use these funds to um, heal our community and, and make it uh, safe for everybody to return to work and back to uh, what is going to be our new normal. Um, and I would also like to just suggest that um, I don't know if uh, GoToMeeting has a function where you can stream this live over Facebook, but that would be a uh, another great uh, utilization to get the word out to the community. But thank you for all that you do. Well, thank you so much. Okay, and the um, the actual ad, Shalyn, you were asking about that earlier. It was mm -hmm. advertised in the Albany Southwest Georgia on March the 22nd that week, and also in the Albany Herald on that Wednesday. And what we'll likely do is because um, at the time that we advertise in the ad, our program income uh, amount change. And so you'll likely see uh, once we complete the um, action plan um, budget and amendment process, a revised uh, allocation that will be advertised so that you'll know what the final allocation was for um, our CDBG and our home program. It may not detail the specific activities, but those dollar amounts for the allocation and the program income. And any more questions, because I don't want to in without someone not having posed their question. I may have to take it. Okay. Well, we certainly do thank you um, on behalf of the State of Albany and the Department of Community and Economic Development. Thank you for joining us on this afternoon. And again, there are a lot of webinars and uh, online uh, informational sessions that are directed at coronavirus. And so we encourage you to uh, attend, participate in some of the local communities that are um, local community meetings um, that are being held. Um, because again, it gets you, it gives you that information that we need at the grassroots level so that we can make sure that the funding um, is directed to those activities that are of greatest needs as it relates to um, just our general programs that we're carrying out as well as those that are related to the outbreak associated with the coronavirus. Oops, I'm sorry, one more correction. I'm sorry. That was April the 22nd. I think I said March the 22nd, April 22nd. I'm sorry. Okay. And again, we will um, um, be making presentation to the Board of City Commission uh, on May the 5th, and that'll again be by a uh, virtual meeting. And so uh, please join us. Um, with that um, in presentation of, again, this information so that um, there may be something else or some other questions or information that is shared uh, at that date and time. 
So we will end our presentation. And again, before the end of today, the PowerPoint presentation as well as the recording will be made available um, for your review and share, um, like Commissioner Young mentioned, uh, social media outlets and some of your other partner agencies who might not have been able to attend on today. And so thank you again, and you all have a great afternoon, and please be safe. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.